Hello. Good afternoon. As uh, well, Max, Maxime introduced the panel uh, pretty well. Uh, the MENA the MENA market is uh, is one of those emerging markets that there's a lot of money being made over there. That's not a secret, but uh, it could get a little bit confusing to know how to enter the market. And uh, to give us some tips on uh, how to guide to enter the market, uh, we invited five of the renowned companies that uh, develop and publish games uh, to the MENA market, among others. Uh, gentlemen, please join me on stage. <coughs> So, starting from the left, your right, uh, we have uh, Vince Khsoub, CEO of Falafel Games. Uh, we have Arz Nader, co-founder and creative director of uh, Game Cooks. We have uh, Chirag Shah, head of carrier relations from Nazara Technology. We have MJ Fahmi, uh, CEO of Babel Games. And we have Noor Khrayes, uh, CEO of Maisal World. Let me see. All right, guys, thank you for flying all the way to Beijing and to take part of this panel. Uh, let's start with a brief introduction of uh, your companies and your roles in them. Uh, let's start from Vince. Hi, hello. Tadja uh, Hao. My name is Vincent. I run uh, Falafel Games. Uh, since 2010, we were the first to introduce the purely Arabic MMO into the uh, Arabic market. And uh, we're backed by... Uh, one of the largest TV stations in the Middle East, NBC, and the government of uh, Abu Dhabi. Um, hello, my name is Ariz Nader. I'm the creative director and co-founder of Game Cooks, based in uh, Lebanon. Basically, we've been in the market for the past three years. We developed games, and uh, we co-founded the, the company, my brother and I, starting four people, and now we reached uh, 16 people in our, uh, in our uh, studio. Uh, hi, my name is Chirag. Uh, I uh, head business development at uh, Nazara Technologies. We are an Indian uh, gaming company. Uh, we are the uh, oldest and the biggest uh, Indian mobile gaming company uh, today with presence in uh, good 45 odd uh, countries uh, uh, with large focus uh, in India, of course. Uh, we've been there for like 14 years. Uh, we are very active in the Middle East and Africa. Uh, that's you know, the second largest region for us after India. Uh, we've been in that market for good uh, four years uh, uh, today and uh, yeah, expanding geographically uh, uh, further uh, into uh, the rest of Africa and uh, uh, Latin America. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Hello all. So my name is MJ and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Babel Games. Babel Games have started in 2012 and we are a pure publisher of mobile and online games. Um, what we do is we uh, take publishing from A to Z, so we cover the localization, marketing, customer support, community management, and um, helping the developers to know and how to deal with our Arabic users. Uh, that said, we have partners in Europe, USA, and several in China, and. They, their games, the Chinese games, have performed w very well in the Middle East and North Africa. Thank you. Um, I'm Noor Khreis, founder and CEO of uh, Maisel Ward, uh, a mobile game studio founded in 2003. Uh, since the foundation, uh, we are focused on building mobile games, casual mobile games, actually, and mid-core uh, recently. Uh, we co-publish also uh, with a global partner right now in the Middle East. Uh, working hand in hand uh, to uh, um, uh, uh, enlarge their shares in, in the Middle East market. Uh, putting this in, uh, so I'm, I'm basically the oldest with the, those young guys in terms of, uh, <laughs> so uh, hopefully that we can answer your questions today about the Middle East. Thank you, thank you guys. So let's just dive right into it. Um, well, the MENA region has what, 20 plus, 25, 20, including Israel and Turkey. Uh, so let's shorter that list. Which, which countries do you focus on, or which countries even support Google billing and uh, Apple billing? 
Talk by me. Uh, any of you? Who okay. has the answer? <laughs> Uh, so the Middle East is about uh, more than 20 countries, more than 20 geographies, and in fact it's very fragmented. Uh, it's up to you to decide who to focus on. Uh, each country or each uh, block of countries has its own uh, attributes, its own characteristics, um, and you need to know them. And if you know them and your strategy is coherent with that block of countries, for example, North Africa is different from the Levant, it's different from the Gulf, different from Iraq a little bit maybe, um, if you have a coherent strategy towards a block and not towards the whole uh, region, uh, then you can uh, target them all. Generally speaking, uh, it involves all the countries of uh, North Africa, the Gulf, the Levant, and Turkey also. Yeah, but, but with but a different language, that's a very... S some of the countries in North Africa, like Libya and Tunisia, they, they don't even support uh, Google billing, and very few payment channels uh, support those regions. So uh, is there still like a reason to to focus on them? Uh, uh, basically, uh, the Middle East market, like any emerging markets, uh, the, the payment is uh, the hurdle, and, uh, um, and it's the obstacle towards uh, uh, you know, publishing and putting our games in the market. But um, still, operator billing is, is playing a major role uh, um, in, in, in these countries, especially the one you mentioned. And I think um, today, even Google Play is, is uh, we, we witnessed uh, recently Google Play bringing up operator billing into their uh, billing list uh, in the App Store. And I, a lot of Middle Eastern operators are, are, are collaborating in, in, in this way. Um, as, um, as said, um, uh, it depends on your game. I think in the Middle East, it depends on the type of game you are targeting the Middle East. Uh, therefore, the market will uh, change from, from, from the type of game you are heading uh, in the Middle East. Um, but it's as much as it's one block, we see it but it's fragmented in a way that sometimes it goes into a certain country into four different uh, areas in terms of gameplay, in terms of user expectations. Uh, billing is, is being solved recently. So we, we, we see in the past two years a lot of changes happen in the uh, credit card penetration and the usage of the credit card that we were not seeing in the past uh, uh, years. And, and we can see the role of uh, uh, direct billing happening today, uh, even with, with uh, telcos in North Africa and, and in countries like even Sudan and, and, and Libya. True, true. But, but uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a newbie to the MENA market. Mm -hmm. I'm a publisher or I have a game. I want to go to the MENA market. Uh, what's, like, what should be the first step? Like which block, like as Vince put it? So the MENA market is separated into blocks. So which block should I like, go first? What's the easy one? just to start with. To answer that, uh, Muhammad, and to add uh, upon what's said, for example, uh, I will start with Iraq. Iraq is not supported by iOS um, uh, market, but the thing is that we saw when we have published our mobile games in Iraq, it did more than great, actually, and Iraqi players have spent so much money in our games, right? They don't how do they do that? How do they spend money? If, uh, they have, uh, for example, for, uh, Iraqi players do not use uh, uh, local uh, iOS accounts because they don't have. So what they do, they register in US accounts, U UK accounts, or anywhere in this world. And they, for example, use iTunes cards. Uh, they use any additional payment methods. You provide them local payment methods, like prepaid card and so on. So they found their own way. But if you provide them with the right way of paying, you will see a great monetizing players from Iraq. Um, if you talk about MENA, uh, in generally, what you have to do is uh, first, you have to support the Arabic language because that's the main language in our region. Uh, after that, you would uh, publish it for the whole MENA region. Some countries, you will get players from it because it's important to build up the community. So, for example... St st still, I mean, if you want to put your resources in, in an area... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm answering... Yeah. I'm okay. answering you that. So, for example, to create a community, Egypt is great to bring in lots of players to create that community. If you're looking, for example, for monetizing players, you would be talking about the whole Gulf region and part of Levant, which is Iraq. So, I, I guess, like, newbies to the MENA market, they will, f firstly, they will look at the monetizing their games. So, they're going for the money. Let's say, so, is that the Gulf region? 
that's the Gulf region, but if you don't have a good community for the players to compete with other players and spend their money, oh, okay. then you will not have uh, monetizing uh, players from the Gulf. That's why we say you have to provide it for the whole MENA, so you have the right community and the right monetizers to be able to spend their games and compete with each other. All right. Chirag, you wanted to weigh in? Uh, yes, sure. So, uh, so I agree with him. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, the Gulf, which ideally should be uh, uh, focused uh, for any starter uh, to start off with. Uh, that's a little easy uh, comparatively. However, if you, you know, look at it uh, the other way, uh, there is not too much competition in the North African uh, part because it is a little complex. Uh, and, uh, you know, while uh, this is a little easy, it is pretty competitive. So, you know, you can decide depending on uh, what what flavor uh, does your ga game ha uh, have and which market does it uh, really suit. Uh, we work in about 14 uh, plus countries uh, uh, in the given region, uh, primarily on carrier billing, and uh, that's, that's doing decently well. And I think, uh, you know, all the countries where uh, Google Play uh, billing does not support, uh, carrier billing is the way. All right. Uh, so, uh, so basically, I want to talk about uh, our personal experience at GameCooks. Uh, after developing uh, almost a dozen of games for the Middle Eastern market, uh, we noticed uh, that there is a lot of, if you want to pinpoint for everyone here to, uh, to relate to uh, the countries that we need to emphasize on more because they have a bigger uh, gamer, gamer community are KSA, UAE, Egypt, Jordan, uh, I think that this is this is uh, the, the the major countries uh, in the Middle East and the North African region, because uh, we have a big game community there. Um, and as as previously, uh, my colleagues were were talking about uh, Google services. Uh, recently, up until two or three months ago, we uh, we are allowed to now actually Google allowed now us to uh, to open a merchant account. So we can actually monetize on Google uh, Google services. So well, we can uh, actually uh, in Lebanon. You were talking. Uh, yes, I'm talking uh, in the old Middle East. Yeah. Actually, oh, all and all the Middle East. Okay. So basically, now you can set up a merchant account and you can uh, actually uh, monetize on your games on Google Play as well. And that's it. Yeah, but just back to uh, where to start. Um, uh, as MJ said, and, and, and if you are going to, uh, you want directly to monetize. Basically, you have to select the, the top countries, uh, and it depends on the games. Sometimes MMO games monetize better in Egypt, okay. and they have better whales in Egypt than Saudi Arabia or UAE. But in general, if you want to make uh, good money, there's Jordan, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE. Uh, those countries can, on the mobile side, can monetize uh, fast for you. Uh, if you want to build communities, and, and you look into long-term uh, relation with the market, Egypt is very important if you have uh, uh, based player games or MMO games. Uh, Iraq is, is playing a major role and, and, and um, it's making money, even with, with all, you know, um, what we, whatever we think about Iraq and the, the issues there, uh, you can monetize. So it depends on your strategy. Um, um, uh, if you have a product ready and you want to, to have a quick win, go for the Gulf area uh, or the country that is, uh, if you want to have a long term tail and, and bring your users slowly to the region and build a community out of it, you have to think of the, the, the big countries. And they are players, probably they don't monetize uh, today, but you will get some whales out of Egypt, for example. Ah, okay. You mentioned yes. earlier uh, Libya. Don't underestimate Libya. Yeah. It's one of the best countries in terms of monetization in the Middle East. Of course, it's really challenging to, the payment logistic is really challenging, but uh, actually it's not a country where you want to first test your game. If you're looking for countries, I mean, uh, to be practical about your first step, assuming your first step is to test your game, make sure it's all right, the players love it before expanding it. <coughs> you don't want to go after the countries that have relatively large populations or relatively um, large uh, revenue. For example, Egypt, Algeria, they're pretty big. Saudi Arabia has relatively large revenue. So if you want to test, don't go there first. Just go to smaller countries now you have to realize that by going to smaller countries, the characteristics of these countries are different than your bigger market. For example, if you try, you can test your game first, say in Jordan and in Qatar, okay? Now, Jordan, um, compared to the bigger market like Saudi, you have to realize that it's our poo-poo is lower. 
So you don't want to judge by, you know, you don't want to say, oh, it's bad because the poop is not good. But at the same time, Qatar is much higher. Okay, so you can, you know, mix and match those smaller countries and then uh, uh, based on, you know, the batting average, you can, you know, afterwards decide whether to go to the larger ones. But don't start with Nipuya or Shenzai, Libya, Kaisu. Nipuya or Shenzai, Shatu, Kaisu. Shen, Kai, Tsushu, Yoshi, Zai, Bijao, Shao, Doko, Jiao. I agree with him, whatever he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you were mentioning like Arpu and Arpupu. So, like, let's say you're there, you launched, and you're there for uh, half a year, like two quarters. What, what's the expected Arpu in the top five countries? So, like, the Gulf area and uh, uh, Jordan uh, or uh, Iraq. Like, from your own experience, like, from your own just latest game. So our, our poo-poo in Saudi Arabia is slightly higher than $200 per month per paying user. Uh, Qatar is much higher. Egypt is more like $20 to $30. Uh, it's very, it varies a lot. But at the same time, it's much easier to find Egyptian players than finding Saudi players. In general, we find uh, the best ROI countries to always be varying. It really depends on the title, it depends on the time of the year, it depends on a lot of things. So you have to keep track of your ROI, and I don't think there's one country that has the best ROI. So I told you not to underestimate Libya because most recently we had actually excellent ROI in Libya, and it's really strange, but uh, maybe next month it's not gonna be the case. You have to keep an eye on your ROI. Uh, so I would say for... Uh, for a healthy game that uh, the R push should be in MENA, the R push should be between $1 and $2, and the ARPPU between $50 and $70 on an average, right? So when we publish a game in the whole MENA, that's the average we take from all the countries to be a healthy game. Well, that's, that's a relatively high average. It is high, and I think that um, in MENA, like, um, a lot of the European or US countries that even much higher, the percentage of whales um, in our countries is pretty big. So you will see that um, whales um, that spends even thousands of dollars in your game, uh, the percent of that is much higher than other regions, which is something pretty good. Uh, but as I said, um, you can't only depend on your whales in the game, so you have to... That, that actually brings me to the next uh, question. So like for in terms of monetization, how do you monetize it? I mean, uh, premium, uh, free to play in the beginning, and then you pay once uh, to play the rest, uh, a freemium model that uh, that is heavy on the in-app purchase. Do you depend on the loyalty of the whales, or do you depend on the, you know, the, the high traffic with a low ARPU? Actually, I would, talk, I would be talking about Babel Games' strategy, and our strategy is that um, we do in-app purchases, and um, we try to influence the whales and uh, uh, the dolphins, the minions, uh, to pay uh, throughout the game. We don't use any advertisement, and we try to always encourage them um, to pay in the game and uh, receive, uh, let's say, what they have paid for. So that's our strategy for them. And um, uh, most of the time, actually, that if you provide the right quality for the Arabic user and he feels that he gets what he's paying for and he sees that it really de deserves that, he's paying for that, uh, you will see that lots of people will be converting from just players to paying players. Maybe, maybe Muhammad, uh, if, um, um, uh, if we can define, but what type of games that we are running in our studios, just to understand the monetization ah, yeah. strategies, because uh, for a casual gamers, um, 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 for casual games is totally different than um, any type of uh, uh, falafel or, or uh, my uh, games. That's totally that's true. totally different. So we we depend on uh, advertising is, is our main revenue streams right now uh, for our casual games. Uh, so um, there is a seventy percent of our revenues come from uh, um, advertising. Uh, there is a um, good, um, um, you know, we have good inventories of uh, advertisers coming uh, into our games uh, through uh, uh, international players. So in, in the ca ca casual uh, uh, scene, um, uh, we don't have whales uh, normally. So our whales is, is, is you know, we, 
they we, come and go. They come and go. So there is no way to depend on or to, to uh, uh, um, we have VIP players. So this is what we call, and, and the VIP, we try to care about them. But there are a few of them in, in the casual games. Um, if you go to the Middle East, don't, uh, the, the advertising revenues is really good. Uh, uh, there is how, how good? Very good, actually. It's one of the. Um, I, I think even the latest reports coming about uh, mobile marketing is mentioned Middle East actually as a one of the uh, uh, second uh, uh, targets uh, these days. Uh, uh, international channels like Chartboost, AdMob, uh, all the players are are selling good in in, in, in the region. Even traditional advertiser um, uh, from uh, from the Middle East started to convert and get themselves into the mobile uh, uh, scene. Um, and and the more we see. Um, uh, companies coming from the traditional uh, uh, online, uh, offline businesses to the mobile, the more uh, ads uh, selling uh, we see on the mobile. Now, what type of ads? We, we see uh, there is a new demand on the native ads. Uh, As in uh, so, uh, advertiser today, for example, let's say uh, Emirates Airline, would love to advertise in your game, but they, are, they don't belong to the banner side of, or the full page advertisement. They want to be part of your game. So they come into, they want to be natively integrated into the games. Uh, so now this is a trend that is coming and you see Coca-Cola, uh, 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 Emirates Airline, Qatar Airways coming and saying, guys, we know that you have uh, hundreds of thousands of daily active users. We want to be part of it, but I don't want to buy a, a full ad. I want to be part of you know, the, your game game, itself. the game itself. So this will also generate new revenue streams for uh, game developers who are uh, producing their games and, and able to, uh, you know, adapt this type of native advertising. So for casual game makers, I think ours uh, at GameCooks you also... Yes, uh, basically uh, at GameCooks what we do, uh, basically casual gamings, uh, we go for uh, trivia games, a little bit of puzzle games and adventure games. So uh, we've been following the same pattern for the past uh, three years and a half actually. And uh, with our t uh, 12 launches, uh, we created uh, a, a freemium model. And this model works well in the Middle East, uh, with us at least. So what we are doing basically is creating our games, uh, sending them to the stores for free, with a, uh, an availability of uh, in-app purchases, lots of in-app purchases. So uh, you get the player in-app purchasing mainly uh, the currency of the, uh, of the game. So uh, he's not in-app purchasing uh, a certain weapon or a certain level. This is uh, one type Just of virtual uh, currency. Virtual, virtual currency. currency yeah. you so you have virtual currency, which is uh, the actual coins that you get from uh, from the game, uh, and then uh, with the coins he can unlock no, uh, more levels. So he can actually uh, this this way you actually work on the replayability value of uh, of the game. So you'd be having more people playing your game more and more and more in order to get more coins to unlock more levels or get more weapons or whatever it is the situation here. So uh, uh, mainly it gets uh, more just, views. Just give the casual game a longer uh, shell life. Exactly, exactly. So uh, here, uh, once, once you realize that uh, one, two, and three times you were able to actually get the certain amount of coins to unlock a couple of levels, you reach to, cer to a certain point advanced in the game where it's definitely you have to end up chase coins to proceed. So uh, it's like uh, you can call it a, some sort of a hook that you are trying to, to play here, and it's really working. And, uh, Do you advertise in your games? Uh, actually, we never uh, used advertising so far in our games, just because we think that it would inter interrupt our uh, momentum, the player's momentum. So we don't want anything that interrupt the engagement uh, with but our as, games. But as Noor said, that there are some native advertisement and uh, yeah, but ju just to doesn't be have to be just to be fair with him. So we we have been in the market for uh, 12 years now, and we uh, actually did the same strategy. We we were not having advertisement in the first years of our games when we launched because we want to keep. Uh, a good relation with our users. W the moment we saw that our games are building the traction that they need, uh, we started to uh, uh, put advertisement in, in, in the game. So I'm not saying always the, the best strategy is to go and, and advertise. Of course, I'm, it's, I'm, it's I'm a, with it's you. A, it's a, it's a, uh, so it's a work of, uh, we started to put advertise, advertisement in our games two years ago. It's like after nine years of being operating in the Middle East and having our <laughs> user base, so we did not go directly with advertisement. Uh, okay. Even when we went to the free-to-play, we, we kept it uh, the same strategy. Um, so so like if, if I'm going with advertisement, what's, what do I expect? In Basically, right PCBM? now we are, we are experimenting with a couple of, couple of angles to, to uh, tackle advertisement uh, ads in our games. So uh, we saw our interstitial ads that are actually working well, so we might actually integrate them in our games soon. And uh, we have the uh, video ads as well, so we might integrate them. So we are taking that into consideration uh, right about uh, the next game that we are launching in a couple of months. 
a good, so a good average of 2.5 dollar uh, ECPM. Yeah, yeah. All right. Th does Nazara do any similar? Ads in there? Yeah. So our revenues, ECPMs per se, we see similar uh, revenues around 2.5 to 3 uh, dollars. Uh, uh, but that uh, uh, today contributes to you know barely about 30 percent of the revenues we make uh, from the region. A uh, large uh, component of the revenues for us uh, uh, still remains uh, paid uh, uh, services. Uh, so, you know, that's something which has really worked well for us because I think of the whole uh, carrier billing integration which we've managed in a lot of countries. Uh, and and uh, because of carrier billing, you know, the ease of transaction to the end user, uh, you know, just a couple of clicks and, you know, you can just unlock levels or, or uh, uh, buy a full game as well, a premium uh, version of the game. So, you know, that has really enabled, uh, uh, or rather, because of this feature, uh, I think uh, the the paid uh, uh, component of our revenues is, you know, still contributing to a major chunk. Okay. So wh wh what about the social aspect uh, mm. uh, of the game? Like, f to, to, to let the game free, like, advertise itself for free? Right. Uh, do you guys use any, uh, well, there's Facebook, but do you use any other social networks? Uh, Vince? Yeah. <coughs> I think I have the same answer for both how to monetize and uh, uh, how to make the game more social. Make a really good game. Make, that's, uh, that's it, make it really fun. And uh, if people, you know, have fun in the game, <coughs> then you can find out about uh, monetization hooks and all of that. No, but, 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 but if, if nobody knows about the game that it actually exists, then uh, they won't know that it's fun. Uh, so, do, do you use uh, your s like? Do you use social networks in your games? Uh, we we we, uh, we yes, they are part of you know. You cannot now think if you are using or not. It's part of your uh, uh, development cycle to have the social integration. We depend basically on uh, on Facebook and Twitter, uh, uh, and it depends on the type of the game uh, that we are launching. But um, again, um, we, we have been driv driving our traffic basically the way Vincent said, uh, good games. Uh, word of mouth and organic growth. We we hardly do acquisitions, paid acquisitions into our games. I think a good game, fun game that is decent can uh, generate uh, good word of mouth in, in the Middle East. But Facebook is major uh, to maintain the community and Twitter is, 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 is excellent sometimes in certain type of games uh, to generate the chain of uh, social interaction. No, uh, sorry to cut you. There is... Uh a very uh, so there's a distinction between you know acquiring users and uh, having your users refer others. So my answer was uh, specifically regarding having your existing users refer more users. Now of course it depends on the category. So for example, in our category of games, we have to invest very large amounts of uh, paid ads, you know, to get users because well that's the way our category operates. It's very different uh, than casual. But even if we do that, we still need uh, the fun factor to drive monetization and to drive referral. I would say that differently a little bit. That in nature, MENA players are social active. It doesn't mean it has to do with um, social channels like Facebook, Twitter, but they don't like to play games alone. So as a best practice, you should provide them with means of chat inside the game, means of fighting each other, means of interacting with each other. So ju just a leaderboard or a a leaderboard, challenge someone directly? PvP, uh, chatting together, guilds. They don't like to play alone games, right? They like to play with each other. They like to play against each other. They like to interact. They like to beat each other. They want to be ranked. They want to see different achievements. So basically competing with each other just... Competing and playing with each other. They oh, okay. like social interactivity, whether it was inside the game or integrated with social channels like posting the achievements on Facebook, inviting your friends, or for example, what we do in our games that we provide them with achievements. The more you invite of your friends, the more achievements you will get. And when they do invite their friends, uh, you will see that they have created the clans, they have created inside community, inside the game, right, okay. to, to have fun together. Our experience is very similar to him. Uh, I completely agree. Social interactivity uh, in the, the whole of the region is, works really, really well. 
uh, you know throwing challenges uh, 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 to people so using facebook or a twitter to you know just create an account and then compete with your friends compete with random people uh, as well once you create an account uh, we've developed features in our games where you could just throw a challenge to any random person uh, and and you can uh, receive challenges as well and you know then posting uh, you winning a challenge losing a challenge uh, or your achievement on facebook uh, you know does a lot to the whole virality of uh, uh, the game uh, uh, and and yeah uh, so uh, facebook and twitter primarily as the social uh, uh, networks uh, but you know the whole so social interactivity uh, and adding that competing element uh, using the social interactivity works really well for so us so i guess well. the, the the social aspect is pretty universal as yes uh, it's extremely the important. The social aspect in our games is extremely important in the region because, uh, as, as everybody was saying before, that uh, the Arabic people uh, love the challenge factor. So uh, they would love to have an invitation from their friend to, to challenge them in a trivia game or in a puzzle game or a, a runner game. And they would pay to beat uh, that. Of uh, course, number. of course. All right. And uh, this would actually bring more visibility to your game. And, uh, you can actually have uh, some sort of a uh, invitation reward when you invite uh, your friend to play or you invite your friend to actually download your game via Facebook, you could actually have a reward uh, right, for well the end game. That's exactly. pretty standard, yeah. Mm -hmm. so to be practical for our uh, you know, Chinese uh, friends who are wondering what kind of uh, uh, social uh, networks uh, users in the Middle East uh, use, um, SNS, Josh, Facebook, Twitter. Just focus on those two and you're covered. Then, Facebook, Taiwan, Alien Show, Twitter. All right. So, okay, let's come to the, the, the hardest part, which is uh, user acquisition. Uh, as Vince, you, uh, you mentioned earlier that you are partnering with NBC. Uh, is that like advertising on media channels, on satellite channels, is that uh, the best way to go or uh, like at least in your experience? Uh, yeah, we've had uh, good success with uh, TV advertising. But, but how much would that cost like uh, if I want to advertise? Oh, yeah. So it is, of course, it is the most expensive, but uh, it is the best quality users that you get also. To, to, be, uh, to be frank about it, NBC is a good channel to advertise. Thank so we, we have also our share. We work with NBC in early stages, and we work with different TVs in, in, in the region. I think uh, NBC is the major broadcaster of the region, so uh, I think this is the key uh, with... Uh, Don't embarrass us. But let's just give the people something to expect. So how much should I spend? Like, if I go to NBC, like, how much would they ask and how much users should I? Talk to me. It's a very tough negotiation. And uh, it's really a negotiation. So I can uh, help you find out. <laughs> it's, uh, but, uh, like an average. Let's an average uh, per user or yeah. average budget? Okay, so so okay. usually you cannot. Like, if you want to make a campaign on TV, you cannot book less than like a thousand spots. So it's really, uh, you cannot test by doing TV advertising. Uh, and f but at the end of the day, it ends up in being the lowest uh, average cost per paying user. So you have to average, if I give you numbers, um, 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 uh, you have to average from um, uh, 35 to 50,000 uh, US dollars if you want to start a, a campaign. From 35 to 50,000 dollars. Yes. If you are a decent, sim simple, small campaign, uh, again, it's depend on negotiation uh, and depend on uh, the, uh, sometimes the TV will not go with your, uh, even, you know, with your product if it does not suit their uh, uh, TV channel uh, policies. Okay. So it's not also that, that uh, uh, clear. But I, we, we, we saw lately even in, in um, uh, the U.S., they, um, you know, uh, when... Uh, uh, Clash of Clans. They uh, they started also their TV. Yeah, they added in the so, TV series. So uh, so it's uh, it, it's a good payback. But just to give the, the the guys a chance to also like, uh, how do you acquire users? I mean, do you go through advertisement or like TV as? Uh, Basically, for us at Gamecooks, we, uh, we use this uh, zero zero dollars uh, strategy for our advertising. So we don't actually uh, put put money outside to advertise. We just try to uh, get the word out in the most creative uh, ways. We've been trying to uh, 
uh, get some uh, video trailers on the go, sharing them on Facebook and uh, on a couple of blogs that we know, and uh, let let the word go out a little bit uh, organically and have. Uh, have can you share some names of those blogs? Um, yes, basically. Uh, so basically, they're they're B two C gaming blogs. Uh, in the MENA region, you have. Uh, <laughs> no, I actually I have a list with uh, with me, and I will share it later on with anyone that uh, really interested in that. Okay. okay. For us, it's uh, largely digital spends, uh, uh, spending on uh, Facebook, AdWords, uh, uh, ad agencies uh, such as Inmobi, Vserve, uh, so uh, net, uh, ad networks. Ad mainly. networks, uh, ad networks primarily. We spend uh, 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 close to 15 million uh, US a year uh, on uh, digital uh, advertising. So you know that's one way how we drive a lot of uh, traffic and acquire a lot of users uh, globally. Uh, but, uh, but about like for the MENA region, I mean, uh, yeah. how, how much of a budget do you, do you put to a game that, like at least a minimum budget? I mean, like, uh, minimum. MJ, like if, if you're starting a new game and what's the minimum budget that you have to consider well, to enter um, the market? The nature of our games is mid-core to hardcore games. So um, it's different from what the guys explained because for th such games, you do not acquire users easily, they are not casual games. So what we do is that we combine both ways, the um, uh, paying uh, for user acquisition and the viral. So after, you know, I would say on averagely we spend about 100K of advertisement um, per game per month. $100,000. Yeah. And uh, we also, when we acquire these users, part of them with the viral um, uh, points we have put in, in the game uh, and the social connectivity it depends on how much are willing to invite their friends and uh, spread up the word to invite others. Yet still it's not uh, the conversion of inviting others is not uh, as big as casual games but it's also payable very good but it's a combination of both for us uh, pay for user acquisition and viral. If I want to give you numbers, the acquisition um, uh, average is between 20 cents to one dollar, depending per on user. the per user, to acquire a user through Facebook or, or, or uh, Twitter. A good channels these days is Instagram. If you are targeting the uh, Gulf region, Instagram is a very good channel uh, to find uh, uh, those active uh, um, users and to advertise with them. Um, uh, but um, 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 the most expensive countries today in, in the MENA region uh, to acquire users is basically uh, UAE and Saudi Arabia. Those are the most expensive uh, uh, then. Uh, and the cheapest uh, right now is, is basically acquiring users from Iraq. Uh, but again, it depends on Android or iOS. Uh, the more, you know, iOS cheaper in Saudi Arabia to acquire than Android. Uh, uh, let's talk about like average. Just but but I, I, would, I would update on... on uh, nor um, info is that actually the marketing in MENA region for per user is much, much different. So as he said, in some countries you would have between 20 cents and $1 for acquiring a user. And in another country you would have up to 3 and $4 to acquire users in the United Arab Emirates or Saudi Arabia. Also, it, it's different between one city and the other. So it depends what kind of users you're targeting um, uh, and from which region and on which device. All right, well, uh, we have two minutes left, so uh, if I missed anything, what would you like to share about the MENA market? Are we missing any services there? Like, besides the developers and publishers, do you think uh, that some services should be available in the MENA market that are not there now? Uh, like more billing maybe in some uh, regions, uh, s local servers. Uh, so what would be your last words uh, in, in, in this session? And make it quick, because we have two minutes left. Uh, I would say that um, in the upcoming two years, you will see that most of the countries in MENA will be covered in credit cards and uh, local cards paying um, in advertisement. Bank cards, I mean, like bank cards, credit cards? Bank cards or local cards like uh, cashew, uh, prepaid ah, okay. local cards, and that um, most of the countries will have several ways for users to pay in. Um, it is expected that um, in the up in, uh, up to 2017, maybe in the upcoming three years, um, the market will triple in its revenue, 
Right now, the mobile uh, market is estimated about 600 million uh, in revenues, and that will triple uh, very soon. So it's going to be one of the key markets worldwide, and I think that most of the companies will be interested in entering the market or having right, partners. Let's give them a chance. Uh, so, so I think uh, uh, still a uh, large component of the market is uh, you know uh, uh, global uh, titles focused. Uh, I think that's going to change drastically. Obviously, a lot of companies here, sitting here, are focusing on uh, developing local titles, and which is going to be a trend uh, going ahead as well. So somebody who wants to maybe also uh, look at uh, Amina as a region, as a focus region, ideally should also you know look at spending a lot of time and resources within that region, understand the tastes and preferences of uh, the locals, and uh, you know, make that as an uh, integral strategy of the whole uh, uh, development process. And okay. I think, yeah, that's the trend ahead. I think. So basically have a local entity there just to understand more the culture behavior of the, the Arabic people. So that's my advice. Uh, I'm personally hoping for the success of, a, for a big success of a game made in China or made with China. There is a chance. So, women, uh, Xiuang, Yoiko, Chungguo, Yoshi, it's a big market worth to invest, uh, collaborate. Uh, you can build partnership. Uh, uh, it has the same behavior that the uh, Asian market in terms of collaboration and understanding the cultures. So I think uh, we would like to see more game developers and partnership happening in the Middle East uh, to en you know, en enrich the uh, uh, games that we have already in the market. Well, thank you, Noor, and thank you, gentlemen. I think that's a wrap. Uh, like th the time is short to talk about the MENA market, we need much longer time. So uh, the, the guys will be available uh, all day today and tomorrow. So if you have any more questions regarding the MENA market, uh, please feel free to approach them and ask them any question. Bug them all the time. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you.